Hi everyone, this is Ellie May with Silhouette Secrets Plus and today I'm sharing a quick tutorial on the blog on how to create some custom home decor. I found these little houses at Target. You could cut your own if you do have the supplies to do so, but I'm going to show you the process that I use in measuring and creating the templates and designs to see what will fit and what will look the best. So here is the set of houses that I bought. Here's a picture of those. And then here is a picture of how I measured and roughly drew out just on a scrap piece of paper for the designs. And I'm going to take this information and then I'm going to use it in the Silhouette software to create my shapes that I can then design in. So I have these three different house sizes. And I'm just gonna start with the first one and I'm going to use the drawing tools on the left side and I'm going to just draw out a rectangle. And I have my transparency on my page setup panel turned all the way up so I can see the grid and this is gonna help me in creating the spacing in, um, and visualize it. So I, now that I've drawn out my rectangle, it doesn't have to be a certain size because I'm going to change it. And I can either choose the transform panel on the right hand side, and the second tab at the top is your scale tab, or I can choose in the quick access toolbar, change the width and the height in the quick access toolbar. The first thing I'm going to do though is I'm going to unlock this lock if it's locked. Mine was locked before on my software. I have not shut it down, so it still continues to be locked. So I'm going to unlock that so that I can change both the width and the height to the measurements that I need. And I am just using that piece of paper that I wrote down those measurements on. So I, as you could see in my drawing, I'll share it here again. It's just a rough draft, a rough drawing of it. It is not to scale. It is just so I know what the measurements and the shapes of each one are. So I have a width of 3.25 and I have a height to the point where the roof starts to go in and that's 4.25. So this is my base of my house. So I have a width of 3.25 and a height currently of 4.25. Now what we're creating here is just a template. So it does not have to be exact sizes. It does not have to be down to the very, you know, minute exact dimension, but it gives you an idea of the shape of your house and what space you have that you can create your design in. So I know that from the bottom to the top of my peak on my house number one was five inches. So I just placed my bottom of my rectangle at the five inch mark. So you can either see in the left corner, left side, there's little um, numbers that you can kind of see. If you zoom in more, you can see that. Or you can use your rulers. Now rulers are a designer edition feature. If you do not have, if you only have the basic software, you will not have the option for rulers but I would highly recommend them. I use them a lot more than I actually realize. So I have my five inch mark. When I move this down here, here's my five inch mark. So I've set the bottom of it at the five inch mark. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to create the peak. So I know that it was five inches from the center point. This little dash here in the middle, in directly above this bounding box in the middle, is your middle of your design. So I'm going to double click right in that same area and keep my mouse there. Then I'm going to click one time. The double click activates your edit points and I can just add, by clicking on that line, add an edit point and bring that up to the top. So this, if I come out of edit points, this is my first house shape. So this is going to be a template for me to design in. So I know what the space I have to make my design in is. So I'm going to go over here to the send tab. I do not want this to cut in this case. 
So what I'm going to do is choose no cut and that just turns the line off. So when I go to cut it, it's not going to cut out. I could also use it as a weeding box if I wanted to as well. But for right now, for our purposes, this is my first template. So now I'm just gonna go up here, I'm gonna go to save as, save to hard drive, and I'm going to name this and save it. So it's my house template. So now I'm going to do the same thing for the other two houses that I took measurements for. I'm going to come over here, I'm going to use my draw rectangle tool, and I'm just gonna draw a rectangle out. Then I'm gonna come over here to the transform panel or use the quick access toolbar. My second tab is my scale tab, and I'm going to change this. And so the dimensions of this second house are three and seven eighths. And then I just grab my calculator to do the seven eighths, 3.875. So that is my width of the bottom. Then my height up to the where the peak starts is 3.25. And then I know that my design was five point or five and three eighths. So three eighths is 0.37. So in this case, it's not perfectly dimensional to get on an exact quarter or, so it's a little more difficult, but what we can do is we can just come over here, we can draw a line. So I'm gonna draw a line, hold my shift key down, it'll draw a perfectly straight line. And then what I can do is with my line selected, I could come over here and I could type 5.375 for my height. And then I can place this in the center. Now what you're gonna see here on the screen is uh, a new feature in the V4.4 software, and I just recently did a tutorial on this. They're called smart snapping lines. So I don't necessarily have to use my align tools. When I move my line in relation to another design, it shows me these blue lines. The top one shows that it's aligned in the center and the bottom is blue and shows me that it's aligned with the bottom of the rectangle that we have. So this is showing me how high my peak should be. So my peak should be up here in the top where the end of this line meets. Now I'm gonna move this down just a little bit so that my line lines up with the top of my cutting grid up here. This way, I can visualize where that line is supposed to go. So if I double click on my rectangle, I can use the same thing. And as you see on my screen, those blue snap smart snapping lines show up as well. So it's telling me that my edit point is centered with that line. And then when I'm done, I can click off of it I can move the line away. It was just a helpful little tool. And I now have my house number two shape. You can see they're quite a bit different. So if I put them over top of here, you can see how having the template would help in being able to determine what design looks good in that space. So I have one more and I'm going to use the draw rectangle tool and draw a rectangle out. Then I'm gonna open my panel. Now, I open my panels a lot more and I teach this way in my classes because the quick access toolbar was not always there. And so each person, each user is going to find what works best for them. Sometimes I will use the top quick access toolbar for the scale tabs. Most often I open the panels to show where it is because not all tools are available in the quick access toolbar. For instance, the rotation is not available as a quick access toolbar tool. So it just, it's really a user preference. I like to show both in my videos. So with this rectangle, it's unlocked and my width for my third one is four and seven sixteenths. So it is 4.4375. 
or 4.437. And then the height was 2.25 or two and a quarter. So you can see it's kind of short. And then it was three and three quarters from the bottom. So my peak was three and three quarters. I could use this line again and I could change it down to three and 3.75 and I can move it over here. The smart snapping lines actually are very helpful. If you do not have the smart snapping turned on or if you do not have the version 4.4 of the software, you could select both of those, use your align center and your align bottom. But those smart snapping tools come in, in handy at some points in time, like this, for instance, in this case. It's kind of a neat feature. So now that I have my line there where my center point's going to be, I can double click on my box and I moved it. So I wanna undo that and undo the move. And then come back here, double click on the box and I want that center point. So there's my center. You can see those little blue smart snapping lines show up and I'm gonna move that up to the top for my point. If I click off of it, the edit points go away and I can move my line off. So now I have created the three house shapes that I can use to design in. I'm going to file save on this file so that I have all of those. And then what I can do is I'm going to take these, I'm gonna copy them, and I'm gonna go back to my design file. And you can see I already started it to test it. Then I'm going to paste it. And I have this here. These are my designs. And if I come in here to my transparency, I can slide that up so you can see this better. And then what I can do is I can just start bringing in designs. So I have this design, that looks good there. And these are double-sided, so I can then bring in the design and see how it's going to look on a certain shape. So I have this one, and that one. I have a tall one that would fit very well here. It fits better here than it does on this one. So this gives you a great way that you can create templates of your shapes in order to see what design works and fits best in the space that you have available. You can also just continue drawing basic shapes. I use basic shapes of circles and, and rectangles or squares all the time, but this was a neat little way I could show you not only how to create the house shape and use the dimensions that you used when you measured, but also to show you those smart snapping tools that are new in the software and recently did that tutorial on. I had a few questions on it, on why it would be useful. And as you could see in, earlier in the video, it turned out to be very useful. So then I have a couple more designs here that I could grab and see what is going to look the best on each of these little pieces. So this one probably fits better up here, fills the space a little bit better. And if you do your sticky notes, you wanna make sure to take your sticky note with you when you take your design. Try and figure out how to move that. I'll move that here in a second when I'm not on the video. So this was the design over here. You wanna make sure to keep those together. I use the sticky notes so I could tell what does the design number was. And then I have these other ones down here where I can bring this up we could shrink it down a little bit and see what's gonna fit better and what will, will look the best. And if the designs that I chose don't fit well, then I can choose another design. And I haven't cut the vinyl or used the materials and I still have a chance to change that out before I get that design cut. So those are just a few of the tips and tricks here is a few photos of the completed project.
Thank you for joining me. I hope these tips and tricks have been a little bit helpful to help you in creating. You are not limited in just using the same tips into in this only this project. You can use these same tips for any projects that you, you are doing with your silhouette in the future. Thank you and have a great day.